Guys, before you stop watching, uh, this really can apply to you too. Using your falsetto is very similar. The rules are almost exactly the same as a female using her head voice or upper register. So I think you'll benefit from these tips as well if you are a guy who really wants to work on strengthening his falsetto. Please check out my warm-ups before you even try this. It'd be great to start with a vocal warm-up. Just, you know, getting your voice moving. We're gonna move right into working our upper register. Like I start every lesson, we talk a lot about breathing. So remember, keep in mind, the higher we sing and you know anything we try, we really need to be supporting from our breath. So taking a big, deep breath, using you know your pelvic floor, breathing deep and breathing down, even though we're going to be singing up here where you feel lifted and light. And sometimes um, you'll notice I lift my eyebrows and you'll hear that from certain voice teachers, and um, maybe your choir teacher is saying, lift your eyebrows when you're singing up high. Find a balance with that. You don't always wanna be tense and you know keeping this part of your body tight and lifting everything and feeling like you have to be super elevated. In general, you just always wanna be relaxed as a singer, even if you're singing a high C. Let's start with just a really deep, nice, low breath, feeling grounded, but we need to talk about our soft palate because our soft palate is the most important thing when we're working in our upper register. So let's talk about what our soft palate is and where is it. If you can feel with your tongue, you can do it with your finger, but I prefer to do it with my tongue, where it's hard, the roof of your mouth, that's your hard palate. It's hard, and then go right behind it, or it gets a little gooey, that's your soft palate. And the best way to describe how to feel a lift in your soft palate, how to really use your soft palate properly, by lifting your soft palate is to yawn. So we'll be doing a lot of yawning today. That is the lift in your soft palate. Think of it like in a room, you know, when you have a flat ceiling, I have a little bit of an elevated ceiling in this room, which is really nice for teaching. But uh, when you have a flat roof like this, when you're singing, you know, it can only go so far. It's gonna hit the top of that ceiling. If you lift, if your soft palate lifts like this, look at all that space you have, that extra space for the air to come through, up into that space and carry forward and out. So when we lift our soft palate, we create more space in our mouth. It's as simple as that. So you always wanna start with a really nice, supported low breath. And when you take that breath, I want you to take a breath into your yawn space, and then you'll sing. So let's do something a little bit high. So I'm gonna demonstrate for you the difference between lifting my soft palate and not lifting my soft palate. So I will do this without lifting my soft palate. So I'm kind of, I've kind of got my mouth just in a flat space. See. Now that's a pretty great vowel. Let's try ah. So. Now I'm going to try it with a soft palate lift. Z. And now I'll try the za. 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 Now, if you can tell the difference, I think you can. There's a little more space, roundness to the vowel. Um, it's just a healthier place, and really, you have so much more air, you can create a lot more sound. Now, notice the difference in dynamics. I'm gonna sing into exactly the same dynamic, and you decide what you think sounds more supported, sounds healthier. Let's go a little bit higher. So, that's without my soft palate lifted. Now, I'll take that low breath and lift. Uh, that's not even creating a lot of space outwardly in my mouth. Relax your face and be able to, you know, create some space outwardly as well. Now do you hear the difference? It's much fuller, much more supported, and it's really as simple as you have more space so you can create more sound. It's like a bell. This is what we call resonating in that head space. So you're resonating in your head voice, in your upper register, but we often call it our head voice because you wanna feel it resonate here. You feel it ringing, and you'll feel it ringing right here. When a bell rings, it resonates, and that's the kind of sound you wanna get, and you wanna kind of feel that buzz and that ring. It's really fun to pick a vowel that you feel works best for you. I love to use the vowel E, um, but what we need to stay away from is because that can re be really pinched it's kind of the same idea that everything's really thin and flat and if you lift instead of Z, 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 it's as simple as that and think about if I open to a longer taller vowel like ah 
you really hear the difference in the richness in the tone. So it's all about your soft palate. I had a voice student that I worked with and I asked her, the first thing I said, so what can you tell me about singing in your upper register, singing in your head voice? And she said, um, you know, sing really softly and with a lot of air, really breathy and thin up there. And I was like, oh no, it's, you know, really think it's the opposite. Um, it's tricky when you're learning to sing in a choir and you're really wanting to blend in. You tend to learn, you know, to sing in a thinner, quieter, really airy space, that's really hard on your vocal cords. So I'll demonstrate singing with a lot of air, letting a lot of air escape, and then I'll sing with a more focused tone, is what I would call it, really focused vowel, singing outward, lifting my soft palate, and see if you can tell the difference. Yeah. And now I will sing in a more focused space. Yeah. If I still want to be able to blend in and not stand out, that had a little more vibrato, was a little more soloistic, I can sing much quieter and still stay really focused in that front tone without all the air. So when you really nail that awesome placement that's really forward, you're buzzing here, you're resonating in your head voice, it's really what we call our mask. So think about, simple as that, that you're wearing a mask and you want the sound to carry right out here. Sometimes when we talk about our soft palate, we have the tendency to sing back here when we lift. But the idea is that you lift and create all that space and you're still singing up and out, sending the sound forward. We talk about singing out of our mask. So think about singing just straight out of your eyeballs even. You know, you'll feel it resonate right here behind your nose. Put the sound up there. Here's the difference. I don't really have a lot of support because I'm just sending it straight back here. I'm not sending the sound out and forward through my mask. So it's as simple as that. All I was thinking about is sending the sound out and forward. So you really want to feel it here. To prevent that really nasal sound, just really focus on the lifting of your soft palate so you have a nice resonating space and then you send the sound forward. So I know that was a lot to think about, but those are really the key tips when you're starting to work in your head voice. Just to recap, think about lifting your soft palate, creating a nice, open, relaxed vowel, singing forward in your mask, letting it resonate, and not singing with so much air behind the vowel, but really focusing your tone and singing forward and using your breath and sending all that sound straight out. So I hope that was helpful. I will have more follow-ups, and the more you request, if you have specific questions, I would love to answer those in the comments below. So please subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.